I am going to read you the story Drover by Nerida McMullen and Sarah Anthony. Drover reigns in midnight and sighs at the peachy dawn. The cattle have been quiet overnight, but it's time to wake everyone and break camp. The bullocks grumble, but head off at a steady pace. Driver rides in the lead. Billy and Splinter are on the flanks, and Bib comes up the rear. Cook and Andy go ahead to set up the next camp. By now, Drover has worked out the leaders and the troublemakers. They name the flighty one Shifty. A cloud of dust swirls ahead and they tug handkerchiefs over their faces and pull on their goggles. It's a dry day today and the bullocks won't get water until tomorrow morning when they reach the next well. Drover knows a full belly will help them forget their thirst and lets them graze as they walk. As the sun rises high, sweat prickles on their brows. Flies cluster on their backs and the bullocks toss their heads, swatting at them with their tails. Finding shade, they rest during the heat of the day. A hush descends over the bush. Lancewood is dense with gnarly branches, with thorns so sharp they can tear the clothes off a rider and skewer the horse. Late in the afternoon, they walk on, arriving at camp before dusk. Drover nods. The area is sheltered and clear. If the bullocks are registered and thirsty, it doesn't take much to set off a rush. A snapped twig could do it. While the bullocks feed, they hobble the horses and the drovers dine like kings on corned beef, potatoes and onion, jam and damper. Around the campfire, they yarn. Bibbs on first watch, and Drover settles down to sleep, smiling as Bibbs sings softly out of tune. The desert air chills, and Bibb brings the bullocks in close. They lie down near the fire, letting out a huff as they fall asleep. Drover loves this sound and has never felt more content until a can under a canopy of a million stars, in this wide open fenceless country. At two in the morning Drover feels a scurry across the blanket. The Drovers are on their feet before their eyes are even open. Shifty has bolted in a fright, blindly tearing off into the inky night. Drover and Bib vault onto their horses, taking off at a gallop. They chase the cattle, racing to catch up with them, racing to catch Shifty. Come on, Bib, sing, hollers Drover. We've got to stop them stampeding into the bush. We'll never get them out. They catch the herd and charge up to the front, amidst the thundering of hooves and heavy flanks, choking dust and spittle fly through the air. Drover and Midnight are hurtling headlong into darkness. Suddenly, Drover and Midnight are neck and neck with Shifty. Galloping side by side, Drover tugs on Midnight's reins, asking her to lean in on Shifty. At full tilt, they nudge and bump into each other, dangerously teetering. Stride for stride, they race on until, at last, Shifty finally gives in and turns in on the herd. The rest follow and circle in on themselves, milling and moving in a wide arc until they eventually slow to a walk. They're huffing and puffing and bellowing to each other. What caused that? Drover asks Splinter. Bandicoot, says Splinter. Drover and Bib shake their heads. The next day they walk the bullocks to the last boar letting them fill their bellies before the last leg. Drover, Billy and Splinter do a head count and they haven't lost one bullock. Bib, Cook and Andy catch up on the Bagman's Gazette, messages left on the water tanks by other drovers. As they wheel the bullocks into the town of Tajara, 
they find the streets are lined with cheering people. Drover sits a little straighter in the saddle and cracks her whip, high above her as she gallops by. They have travelled thousands of kilometres and been in the saddle for almost half a year and they're all bone weary. Edna is dreaming about a hot bath and a soft bed, but she knows she'll do it over again as her heart belongs in the bush. And on the last page, there's some facts about Edna, who is a real drover, one of the first female drovers in Australia. And on the back page, there's also a glossary for the words, um, new words that you may have learnt in this story. <music>